Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. This is the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of Canada. Today, we are honored to be sitting down and speaking with Stonewall Mayor Sandra Smith. Stonewall, Manitoba is nestled within the heart of the Interlake region. Charms visitors with its small town allure with rich history. Home to approximately 5,000 residents, Stonewall offers a tranquil escape from the urban hustle. Boasting tree-lined streets, quaint shops, and welcoming locals, Stonewall celebrates its heritage through annual festivals and heritage sites like the iconic Limestone Quarry. Outdoor enthusiasts relish in nearby recreational opportunities, including fishing at Stony Mountain Creek and exploring nature trails. With its friendly atmosphere and scenic surroundings, Stonewall invites all to experience its peaceful ambiance. So stay tuned, and we will be right back after a quick break with cross-border interviews featuring Mayor Sandra Smith. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration. At Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Mayor Smith, thank you so much for doing this, for sitting down with me and talking about yourself and talking about the beautiful town of Stonewall. I want to start by getting to know a little bit about you and the person behind the mayor's persona a little bit. And I want to start by asking you the same question I've asked every single person who's ever come on this show, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Sandra? Um, It's not a single single answer. Um, I'm sure you get that a lot too. I I think um, initially... Um, growing up, I was involved in, in organizations where their main purpose was to give back to community. And so that has been instilled to me since, um, you know, very early on in my childhood. Um, my family as well also had that sense of community. So, um, I've grown up that way and it's probably the the biggest thing. Um, the other, um, individual who had a big influence on my life was, um, a former, uh, boss that, um, I had for worked for, for quite some time. And he had a, a good sense of community and also a, a political acumen as well. So we would have, you know, conversations and, and I would, you know, kind of pique my interest. And, um, we were talking one day and I, and I just said, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do that when I'm mayor. And he, and, and I kind of laughed and he said, well, why, why can't you be mayor? And I said, well, I don't know. I, you're right. And so that kind of, kind of always stuck with me. And, um, yeah, so, um, that's, kind of that initial drive that that drove me to to enter into the municipal politics giving back you could have done it in many different ways but at the end of the day you chose the political route now i can imagine you volunteered as you said you Mm -hmm. were active in the community but in 2020 2018 and correct me if i'm wrong here you run for mayor you were unfortunately defeated but four years Mm -hmm. later you decide to come back in 2022 and you run and you were successful what was it about the municipal draw? Because I looked at your background and you mm-hmm. seemed like someone who could have gone provincially or federally, but you chose at the end of the day to go municipally. What was it about the municipal draw that allured you to it? Chris, you've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> I try on this show. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I started off actually as a counselor in 2014. Um, so I had four years uh, of council experience and that obviously was very fulfilling and I wanted to continue on um, in that role. Um, our current mayor at that time decided he wasn't going to run again. And so there was uh, another individual on council along with me who decided to run for mayor. And, uh, you know, I, I, I fell a little short, but I didn't lose that drive. And I knew that I had um, a lot to give back to the community uh, in a political way. And um, 
I, I, I still had that drive and that passion. And I wanted to see some of the projects that um, I had started along with my current, along with council uh, that in 2014 to 2018, I wanted to see those to fruition. So that is why I, I came back to, to give it another go. And um, thankfully I was successful the second time around. So what was going on in 2014? Because you you made that joke at the beginning of the interview that uh, you and your sort of political mentor sort of were talking about when you're mayor, you're going to do things. Why not now? What was going on in 2014 that finally said to yourself, now is the time. Now is the time to get involved and put my name on the ballot. Was there an issue going on in the community or was it just it was the opportune time and you felt like you could give a little bit more of yourself in the council chambers? Um, I felt it was the opportune time. I, I don't. I, I would discourage somebody running for council just on a specific issue. Um, I hear that I a lot that on this show. <laughs> I find that um, it's, I mean, when you, when you're on council, you know, when you're the mayor, either you're a mayor or a counselor, you want to be able to, you, you want to do it because you want to get back to your community and drive your community forward. And if you run on one issue, then if that issue gets resolved, well, do you still have that same drive? Is there, is there nothing else that you want to achieve? So um, for the person that's doing it for one issue, you, it, you won't find it very fulfilling. I want to, I'm, I'm going to ask a very odd question, but I think it's an important question. Okay. How do you know you're driving your community forward? Is there metrics that you put into place when you vote on issues that are in front of council to say, how is this going to drive the community forward? Or do you take every issue and sort of ask the residents of Stonewall to say, okay, is this what you would want? Take me through the process of you making that final decision to move your community forward on every issue that is presented in front of council. So we, we do have a blueprint um, and we're, we're not unique in this situation. I think most, most, uh, most municipalities have uh, a blueprint of how they want to move their community forward. So we just recently updated our strategic plan, which will take us through 2023 to 2028. And we put out a lot of um, uh, asks from the community to see how what they would like to see. Um, so we did um, a survey. We also had, you know, kind of um, consultation. We, we worked with a, a firm that did a consultation within the community. So we, we have a good sense of, of what the community overall would like to see. And that kind of is our is our blueprint where we make decisions as far as where we want to uh, see the community go, where we spend our money. Um, and that's typically what we, what we follow. I, I, I'm a big proponent. I, I, I talk a lot on this show, I should say, about apathy within municipal uh, mm -hmm. realms. You talk about that consultation period. Do, do you feel like you get the engagement you want when you're making those decisions, when you're looking at town-wide issues, or do you always believe, like I do, there's always a little bit more that you could always ask for and you could always get a little bit more feedback from mm -hmm. people. Talk to me about the apathy in your community and if you see that there's actually engagement or a little bit more need for engagement. Um, I feel there's more need for engagement. <laughs> um, I remember joking with uh, with our consultants when we, you know, we got the results back from, from the survey and, and they were really happy with the number of respondents. And I wish... I want to say I was a little shocked. I thought, really? Because I didn't find the number very high, but I guess, you know, they obviously do consulting in a lot of different municipalities and they felt that um, the response back in Stonewall was was quite significant. And for me, I I would like to see it higher. And, you know, one of the things was how, how do our residents, how do they want to be notified? How do they want to be engaged? And, you know, we, we do have several, several outlets for that. We have, obviously, we have our local newspaper. We have... Um, social media, um, you know, our town website. So we won't really want to encourage uh, people to, to use all of those avenues as far as getting information. But, you know, I, I always at the end of the day, there's always going to be people who, who say that they didn't know about something. I'm sure you, I, you know. I, I'm shocked that that that. <laughs> I know. Sandra. What do you mean? There's people who say that I, I don't know what you're talking about. You didn't yeah. communicate at all. Um, 
How do you play in that sandbox, though? Because you as mayor have to go out and sell issues. You have to go out and engage with people. What role do you play in talking to your residents? Because I can imagine in a small town like Stonewall, you go to the grocery store, you're going to get stopped because probably people know who you are. Is it challenging to engage with people on a day-to-day basis when some days you just want to be Sandra as well? Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't think people, most people, when they run for office, they, they kind of know what they're getting into. Um, and if they don't, they will find out pretty soon. Um, I don't mind those, uh, you know, stopping in the grocery store. I, I actually purposely go out in the community and, and look for people to talk to. I mean, because that's where you find out things. And when you're out in social settings, people are like, oh, well, I don't want to bother you. And it's like, no, it's like, you know, bother me. Like, I would rather... I would rather people uh, engage with me or my counselors face to face or a phone call or even an email rather than uh, not hearing about something and and having it be uh, like, you know, social media or coffee shop talk, which I mean, is is fine. But if, if, if somebody has an issue or a problem and they would like it addressed, then I would rather hear from them directly. How important is it for you to hear both sides of the equation? Because I can imagine in your time in office, you understand that you have probably not uh, made everyone happy in your community. There's never one vote that 100% of the people are going to agree on. How important when you do those engagements, when you do go to those uh, the grocery store or to the coffee shop and talk to people, to listen to both sides, listen to the people who agree with you, who say you're doing a great job, but also listen to the people who say, Sandra, uh, my property taxes are too high. Sandra, the service mm-hmm. levels are too low. We need to increase them. How important is it for you as mayor and sort of your council as well to listen to all sides and not be in that echo chamber that we traditionally try and find ourselves in? It's very important. I mean, we know that when we make decisions, we're not going to please everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Shocker. <laughs> but, um, oh, you know, when, when you make decisions, you want to do it for the, the best of the community overall as a whole. And you're never going to please everybody with the decisions you make, but you want to make sure that um, they understand why you made those decisions. And we are always open to, to, to listening and to learning because we're not, you know, we're not the experts in everything. And, and that's, but that's what makes um, a strong council is when you listen to your residents and, and see a different point of view, because um, typically, uh, you know, our makeup at our council table, we, we don't always agree on things, but we, we need to be open to, to hearing um, someone else's point of view. And we're elected by our residents and it's, it's our job to listen to them and to get different points of view on, on different um, decisions that we make. The, you talk about the different decisions and I can imagine there's days when you walk into that council chambers thinking, you know, how you're going to vote on an issue mm-hmm. or not vote on an issue, but things come up. People say things in those council meetings, delegations, your fellow counselors, how important is it to sort of without being neutral, be neutral in a setting where you think you know what you're going to vote for, but you have to be open to potentially changing it at the last minute. Um, it's it's very important to be open-minded and and willing to hear other people's point of view. Like there are times where I, I think I know, you know, my stance on an issue. And I will say that I, I have had counselors who have made very persuasive arguments on, on different issues that have kind of made me pause and and think twice about it and that's what i that's important because you shouldn't you shouldn't walk in just you know stuck in in what you want to do you should be open to to possibly having your mind change for for the betterment of of the of the of the community right and that's the perfect segue a little bit here i want to talk about the town as a whole for a little bit if you don't mind okay and before I do this, as I always do on the show, I preface it by this statement because I seem to get emails on this question a lot. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a policy of council. This is not a direction of council. This is the mayor's opinion in her opinion alone. She has one vote on council. There, I've said it. If you want to send an email, send them to me. Don't send them to the mayor. <laughs> that being said, Mayor Sandra. In your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest issue or issues facing the town of Stonewall today as of recording this episode? 
biggest issue facing the town of Stonewall today is property crime. Okay. Okay. So I've done, this will be my 203rd interview with mayors, counselors across this country. Mm -hmm. You were the first person to say this. And I'm going to sort of play in the sandbox a lot because this is an okay. important talk conversation. Mm -hmm. Crime, municipal issue, also provincial issue. Mm -hmm. How is the town of Stonewall addressing property crime in 2024 with the resources that you currently have? So we are, obviously we are, we are not the police. Yep. Um, our Shocking. role. Shockingly, for those who are listening, the municipalities are not the police. <laughs> um, we are doing what we can as a council to um, keep communication open with our local RCMP, um, to listen to our residents and, and the issues that they're facing. As a council, we have met with our Minister of Justice and we've outlined some of the issues that, that we've been having here. And, and this is an issue that's not unique to Stonewall. Um, our surrounding areas also are facing uh, certain uh, property crime issues. Um, this, is a, this is a big one for our town because it is affecting, it is affecting um, a lot of our residents. And we are doing our advocacy work with the province. Um, I also sit as a director for AMM and we are advocating uh, through through that channel um, with with the province, um, trying to make changes to the you know the catch and release bail system, and doing what we can to make sure that our residents um, are doing what they can do to keep the property safe. And we're looking at different things in in Stonewall. Whether we bring in, uh, you might be familiar with the community safety officer program that's in Manitoba. So we're we're looking at possibly doing that, increasing that kind of presence in town. Uh, going to be looking at working with Crime Stoppers. We're also looking at having the province come out and we're going to be uh, doing a, a public open house and just kind of, you know, talking about some of the issues that we're facing, things that we can do here. Um, so, so, I mean, so I'm, it, it is I'm a big gonna issue play a little us. bit of devil's advocate with you for a little okay, second Chris. here, Sandra. Yep. You're talking about things that are in the works, but people in your community, I would assume if I go talk to a hundred people in your community, they mm -hmm. may say, I still don't feel safe though. That's mm -hmm. great that we're doing all that right here, right now. Mm -hmm. What what does the town need to do in the short term to make people safe? Is it just do as you have been doing and try to solve the crime issue? Or is there areas that the town is working at right here, right now on this day of recording, February 28th and being released later on that you're doing <laughs> to make people feel safe? Um, that is a, that is a tough one. Um, because I'm assuming you hear about this on a regular basis when you talk. We do. And, and, you know, and the people that it's affecting are, you know, they're, um, and rightfully so, they're they're angry about what's going on. Um, what we can do to help people make, help people feel safe. Um, let is them know hard, that we're. Is it hard to it, pass the buck a little bit? Because this is not just a Stonewall issue. This is a province issue. This is a federal issue mm -hmm. that everyone needs to come to the table. But and from my conversations, it doesn't seem mm -hmm. like the provinces and the federal government want to come to the table mm -hmm. across the mm -hmm. country and work with municipalities on issues like crime. Is it mm -hmm. hard to say well, we can only do as much as we can before the federal government and the provincial government have to step in? It's extremely hard to say that. It's it's incredibly frustrating. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, our council has, um, you know, we have We've talked about this issue a lot and, and it is frustrating and we, we want to be seen as being, you know, proactive and then solving everything. But there's uh, from, you know, there's only so much that, that council can do, but what we can do, we're doing. Is there ways that we can um, help our residents feel safe? Yeah, there's certain things that we could that we could do and that we are looking towards doing. I was going to mention this later on, but I, I don't want this part of the show to be uh, every, someone to go away from this part of the show saying that Stonewall's not safe. I was there this summer. I, mm -hmm. I spent the night in Stonewall and I can say didn't feel unsafe at one bit. 
Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I'm speaking for the entire community here, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't want to put words in the mayor's mouth, but Stonewall is a safe place, correct? Stonewall is a safe place. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure that's on the record <laughs> for anyone who's about to say, well, I'm not going to Stonewall. You I'm not should. Gonna, no, I mean, <laughs> yes, Stonewall is a safe place. There is this this issue that is happening in our town, um, and it's it's not like... I don't want to say that people don't feel safe. They're just frustrated that it that it that it's happening and that the um, the legal system isn't um, supporting them. Isn't helping stop it. Is that fair to say? I I could not have said it better myself, Sandra. Okay, must um, be my legal background. There you go. <laughs> um, now I, I did mention the fact that if I go to Stonewall, which shockingly i as i just said i was in stonewall so i mm -hmm. i'm actually able to answer this question pretty well for myself and i asked okay. 100 people for me it was 20 people because i walked down your main street and i was trying to find mm -hmm. your city hall which i could not find because i did not bring my phone because it was dead so i was walking by myself mm -hmm. downtown <laughs> and upon my discovery i was talking to people because a when they see a random alberta license plates i'm assuming they're going to stop and say where are you from what are you doing mm -hmm. here and they did and I asked them, what are some of the issues that are facing your community? Now, they gave me crime. They gave me health care. They gave me a few things that are outside of the municipal jurisdiction. But they gave me some local issues. Potholes need to be repaired faster. Parks need to be upgraded. And I'm assuming mm -hmm. you've heard all of these before. Mm -hmm. How do you, as mayor and council, balance the needs of the community with the needs of the one. Because when someone comes to talk to you about their pothole in front of their house, their service that needs to be increased, that's the most important thing to them. But you mm -hmm. don't have an unlimited supply of money. You have a limited supply of money that you can spend every year and you have to run a balanced budget as a municipality. Mm -hmm. How do you balance the needs of the community with the needs of the individual? You're asking some tough ones here, Chris. Oh, I, I, I I try on this show. It seems to be one of those. Because, but at the same time, it, it's not tough because you do it on a regular basis. Yeah, I know. It's it's not a tough question. It's a, um, you know what? We do our best to, to um, when we, our decisions, obviously, we do our best to, um, as a whole for the community. But you're, to your point, there, there are those those certain issues. So we do have, um, as far as like, you know, my street needs to be fixed. Plan. We do we do have an asset management plan um, that we've gone through, which identifies uh, the conditions of our of our roads and kind of where what needs to be fixed first and kind of goes in order of, of um, uh, you know, kind of worst to best. Um, as far as like individual, you know, potholes, uh, we do also at, every year we go through our works and operations go through the town and they, and they fix the potholes, not just, you know, one, but they go through the whole town and, and address all of those issues. Um, but for the much bigger infrastructure that is, that is done systematically. It's not just a, you know, I, I pick and choose what streets we want to do. What? The mayor doesn't <laughs> control what street is done on a 24 hour basis. Shockingly. <laughs> There's a lot of um, soccer's on the show. <laughs> I, I know it seems it seems like I'm learning so much about municipal politics and Stonewall there, Sandra. Um, I, I, I traditionally talk about the challenges that municipalities face, and I was accused once on this show of only talking about the negative. So I'm going to flip the script a little bit here, if you don't mm -hmm. mind. And I'm going to ask you. What does Stonewall get right? What is the thing that you are the most proud of when you talk about your municipal government, your municipal uh, council, your municipal administration? When you go off to talk to Cam Blight at AMM, or you mm -hmm. talk to, yes, I know Manitoba <laughs> municipalities quite well these days. When you go off to AMM, which is in Brandon, and I will be there, what would you be talking to your fellow uh, councillors and Reeves and mayors from across Manitoba to say, you know what, you do it good stonewall does it great oh gosh stonewall time, is time uh, to boast your community sandra i'm ready for it <laughs> uh we just actually we just finished hosting uh the provincial men's curling championship the viterra championship and i gotta tell you um as a mayor i have almost never been as proud as our community as i was that weekend it was amazing we had um, curling teams from all over the all over the province, and um, it was a really great weekend. 
the you know over 200 volunteers and they weren't just from Stonewall they were from our surrounding communities as well we we certainly know how to host um we know how to take care of uh people visiting and there was just such a sense of pride and, and just the the feedback that we got about how well um the tournament ran um everyone was so friendly and helpful um everyone just stepped up and we hear that a lot when you know we we also just hosted our our Veterans Cup, which is a, a PV hockey tournament. We had um, 23 teams uh, all over the province. Also, I think from Ontario, from Saskatchewan, same feeling. I mean, I think that we're good at, we're good at hosting uh, national events and uh, our facilities are, are, they're fantastic facilities to be in. And we have, uh, you've been here. So I'm going to guess that you were at Quarry Park and, it's a, you know, it's an 80 acre park that uh, is uh, phenomenal. And we have our Veterans Memorial Sports Complex. So we, we do recreation really well here. You certainly do. And you, it seems like it's a very active community as well. And I'm not sure if it was something going on the weekend that I was there, but when I did make a stop in Stonewall, uh, I, I think I, I'm going to get this wrong and I apologize right now. It's, it was either football or or soccer that was playing in the parks right across the uh, the, the area from us. And it was middle of uh, beginning of August. So uh, I was just shocked at uh, the turnout at the park and how many mm-hmm. people were engaged. And I, I, I've been to many communities in my time. And mm-hmm. that's the first time I was actually shocked to see a small mm-hmm. town so lively and so energetic about recreation. Yeah, it's, it's probably one of the, the, the biggest uh, ticket items that we spend our budget on is recreation. Seriously? Are Seriously. you guys, a, you, are you guys are, I'm assuming you're a hub for the surrounding area as well, we are. right? We so are. While, while your population is approximately from what I, from the last census I read about 5,000 mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. what's, what's your surrounding community? Like, what do you feed into? Are you probably closer to 10 or are you probably closer to eight? Um, we probably feed into, I'm going to say close to 10. Um, so we, we do have like, so Stonewall is surrounded by another municipality. Um, so all of, a lot of that feeds into us and, um, uh, you know, there's, uh, other municipalities also, but we are the, the hub for, um, a lot of our area. So we, we have a lot of people feeding into our facilities, um, playing soccer, hockey, ringettes, baseball. Who would have thought recreation would be a top item that we'd have to spend things on in 2024? But God bless municipalities. I know. <laughs> I, know. Um, I want to turn to my last subject because I'm cautious of time and we're at the half hour mark and I want to get into my favorite subject. Okay. And the reason I say it's my favorite subject is because, like I said, I like to travel. And mm-hmm. now that you've come back, on, you've come onto my show, I'm coming back to Stonewall this year. You should. So I invite you. <laughs> I'm coming you back. Tour. And exact that is exactly what I'm trying to get at is I'm hoping that we can sit down for a coffee and go for a tour. You bet. So, as I have listeners from across Canada, and yes, for those who are listening around the world, thank you, Australia, for randomly tuning in every week. Greatly appreciate oh, Australia. There you go. Well, I have family there. <laughs> speak to the Australians and the Canadians outside of Manitoba. What are some of the tourist destinations? What are the things that people should do if they ever find themselves in or around Stonewall, Manitoba? So definitely, if you are in Stonewall, you would uh, head up to Quarry Park. Um, We do have an interpretive center there. You can learn all about our history, uh, how we were founded on on the quarrying industry. It's probably the the best place to be. Um, We also have... uh, uh, a lot of heritage buildings along Main Street if uh, you have that um, appetite if you like to know about history and masonry and, and architecture there's lots of lots of that on our Main Street. In and around Stonewall uh, we have lots of great golf courses. Uh, we have Okamic, War- Okamic Marsh um, which is um, second to none. Ducks Unlimited are, are located in there so if that's if that's your um, your interest definitely that and gosh I ask a weird question? I know this is going to sound like a really stupid okay. question. I usually ask these questions, but I always feel dumb when I ask it. Okay. How did Stonewall get its name? Because I read something on social media and we should always believe what's on social media. Mm-hmm. But how did Stonewall get its name Stonewall? Is it 
truly because there was literally just a stone wall at the entrance of the community one year? Or am I out to left field? Because when I read that, I was like, this can't be true. This literally, this can't be true, but it could be. No, <laughs> stone walls was named after our town founder. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not a stone wall. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that because when I read that, I was like, this can't be true. Um, okay. So you, you talked about Quarry Park, which I, I tried to get to, but unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, was closed the day that I was there because, you know, you when you arrive at nine o'clock at night, things aren't traditionally open. Mm -hmm. um, where do you go after a long day of council meetings, after a long day of budget meetings, after a long day of being mayor, is there a place that you can escape to in your community that you can just decompress, let it all go and know that tomorrow morning you'll have to get back up and do the greater good for your community all over again and make it better than you left it the day before? So I've done a bit of homework as well, and you, I believe I'm not allowed to say my house. You can if you want. <laughs> that is the scapegoat answer, in my opinion. Do you actually go to your house? Um, I actually do. Um, home is a is a is a. I want to say it's a a safe spot uh, where you know. I mean, as much as you like being out in the community and and talking to people, when you're home, you can just turn everything off. And you, I, I guess, and I would think most people would say that because they don't have to be um necessarily on if i can say that mm -hmm. um but for me i mean home is always a great place to be at the end of the day but when i when i go out and i just kind of want to um i guess relax i always find you're gonna laugh when i say this but um i have a, a really good group of friends um a really nice circle of friends that i like to spend time with and we, this is going to sound very small town to you, but um, uh, this also comes, I'm going to say this answer because it also comes from, uh, I guess, uh, family, what we did, not not what we did as a family, but um, you always find friendship. We have a, a Royal Canadian Legion here in Stonewall, and there's a lot of good camaraderie there, and it's it's relaxing. <laughs> I know you're laughing. Camaraderie. Right? Camaraderie, that... <laughs> yes. But it is true. I mean, um, it, you just kind of relax. It's it's a, a place where you can go and talk to people, and and you don't um, you don't worry about things. It's just it's just relaxing. And I know yeah. that's an odd a, an odd an odd answer to that question, but um, if it's a place where I want to go, I would go there. Or honestly, we have so many active transportation trails in Stonewall that connects the whole town. Um, anywhere in town really you can go walking and you're in nature and it's just it's serene um when i was there and i know i keep on harkening back but i i truly felt like i had gone to a different place while i was there mm -hmm. it felt like there was a change in atmosphere it wasn't that urban setting that you get when you're in downtown or winnipeg which for those municipal councillors listening from Winnipeg, come on the show. That'd be great. They appreciate it. But when you're in Stonewall, it seemed like you were just, you're. there's a different pace and a different mm -hmm. attitude when you talk to people. Um, and it brings me to the last question. We talked about yourself to begin this show, and we're ending by talking about the town of Stonewall. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what makes the town of Stonewall such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? I would say the first thing that makes Stonewall um, unique, and I'm sure this answer has been given by, you know, other people as well when they talk about their communities. Um, the uniqueness of Stonewall is the sense of community. Um, when you're here, you feel safe. And I know our earlier conversation, you know, I mean, that that's one issue that, um, uh, I don't necessarily think make people feel unsafe, but you feel safe. You feel like um, when you walk down the street, you know, people it's, it's a small town feel with big city amenities. If I can, if I dare say that. Um, you do. I never felt I like do. I had to go, I had to leave town to get something because I went to the grocery store and I grabbed uh, my supper for the night. So I, I agree with you on that segment. So yeah. <laughs> 
but it's 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 definitely the census community that makes that I feel makes us unique. It's it's a special place to be. Um, I grew up in the city, and um, I would always I had family like my, my grandparents lived in Stonewall, so I would be here as a young girl, and uh, eventually I, I moved here permanently. But there's always and for people that commute. Um, because we are typically a, a known as a bedroom community, but for people that commute from from Stonewall into the city, I know that when when I did it, I would leave and you'd go to the city, you'd spend your day, and then you would come back. And as soon as I hit the perimeter, I would just exhale, and it would be like, oh gosh, I, you know, I can't wait to get back home because it was just it, it's there's no stressor, like it's just it's just it's a great place to be. And I would highly recommend it for anyone who is traveling through Manitoba, get off the beaten trail and head up to Stonewall because you will not be uh, sorry you did. It is a place that you just, you lose yourself in a little bit because like uh, mm -hmm. the mayor just said, it is it is a friendly community and if you have an outside uh, province uh, license plate, they will stop and ask you, well, what brings you to Stonewall? <laughs> so, we will. Um, mayor, Sandra, I want to thank you. This has been a wonderful 35, 40, almost 40 minutes now of talking to you about your community and about yourself. I, I have more newfound respect for municipal leaders like yourself who strive to make their community a better place every single day. And it sounds like from our brief conversation and hopefully not our only conversation, uh, you are doing it for the right reasons. So thank you so much for serving and thank you so much for being part of the show. Chris, thank you for the invitation. This has been great. I mean, anytime I can talk about Stonewall, it's a good day. And I appreciate what you do. And this show is, is a, it's a great show. I actually, I did a little bit of homework as well. And, and I went on and I was listening to some of the interviews that you've done. And I learned a lot about places that I haven't been to yet. So um, this is a great avenue for anyone that wants to learn a bit more about uh, communities across Canada to, to learn more. And hopefully that increases some some visits to some other places that they never would have thought of going to. I agree. Well, I, thank you first off. And um, You're welcome. I appreciate this. Um, well, you, you just said it, it, whenever you want to talk about Stonewall, well, I'm going to be at AMM. Let's go talk about a Stonewall. Perfect. I'm, you, you will track each other down. I, I, I would love to meet you in person and, and tell you more about Stonewall and the great well. things we're doing here. Thank you, Mayor Smith, for joining us once again. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth cross-border interviews like you saw today, and even our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed and engaged. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.